and gentlemen of excellent family, introduced under the most respectable conditions in an atmosphere of elegance and refinement. Object? Matrimony. Unfortunately, I won't be able to offer my usual lightning services today, as I have a previous appointment in Yaldris, New York, arranging the second marriage of Mr. Horace Van Gelder, the well-known half a millionaire. As my late husband Evan Levi always said, that means he's got at least 60,000 cash. But I'll do my best to have you carry across somebody's threshold before the week is out. Now, I might also mention I'm available for financial consultation, instruction for the guitar and mandolin, short distance hauling, and varicose veins. <laughs> Reduced. <laughs> But he will also dance at your wedding. And not alone either, for I happen to be engaged in finding him a suitable second wife himself. What he really needs is someone steady to clean the house. As my late husband, Ethel Levi, always said, marry the bride. Take a housekeeper, think she's a householder. I know all about it, Mrs. Levi. How many yours is he going to propose to Miss Ivy Malloy this very afternoon? Which is exactly why I'm on my way to Yonkers this morning, Mr. Kemper, and can take on your case. Look at that. I've nothing in here to pay my train fare with. Only large bills, fives and sevens. <laughs> I must have some change here somewhere. I only hope this isn't a wild new station, Mrs. Lee. Oh, and speaking of poultry, I am also available for fresh Jersey eggs, surgical corsets, free boned ears pierced, oh, and pierced ears, re-plugged. Mrs. Lee, <laughs> Always a pleasure. And you've got more business than a dog has fleas. Well, as my late husband Evan Levi always said, if you have to live from hand to mouth, you might as well be ambidextrous. Where <laughs> <laughs> oh, to, Mrs. Levi? To Yonkers, to handle a highly personal matter of Mr. Horace Vandergelder, the well known no unmarried half a millionaire. Gonna marry yourself, Mrs. Levi? Well, Mr. Sullivan, whatever put such a preposterous idea into my head. Oh, your head. I have always been a woman who arranges things for the pleasure and the profit it derives. I have always been a woman who arranges things like furniture and daffodils and wives. When a man with a timid song
thousand times, Mr. Kemper, that you will not marry my niece. I've told you a thousand times that I will marry her. Not without my permission, you won't. Now, this is a free country, no, it's not a free country for fools. She's consented and I'm going to marry her. I'm telling you that you will not. And I'm telling you that I will. Never. Tomorrow. Never. Today. Herman Gard is not for you nor for anyone else who can't support her. You are a novice. Now, I make a very good living. A living, Mr. Kemper, is made by producing something that somebody needs at least once a day. Yes, I... Yes, sir! And a million is made by selling something everyone needs every single day. You artists and you painters produce nothing that nobody needs, never! You might as well know anyway Irvin Gard and I can find the married is right, and fair and will do it! You're the practical, seven-foot-tall nincompoop! That's an insult! All the facts about you are insults! That's what you have to say! Thank you for the honor of your visit! Good morning! Urban Guard is of age, and there's no law that says- Law! God, did you say law? Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Kemmer. The law is there to prevent crime. We men of sense are there to prevent foolishness. And it is I, not the law, that will prevent you from marrying my niece. And I've already taken the necessary steps. Steps? Yes, Mrs. Dolly Levi's on her way now. <laughs> Dolly Levi? Your marriage broke Ah, never mind that. She's gonna pick up Urban Guard and take her to New York. New York? Yes, and keep her there until this foolishness is out of her head and yours. We'll just see about that. Thank you again for the honor of your visit. Good morning. You have to sit still, Mr. Van de Gunner. If I cut your throat, it'll practically be unintentional. Ah, enough of this. I'm a busy man with things to do. A scraped chin is my least concern. I did the best I could, Mr. Van de Gunner. Joe, I've got, I've got extra reasons for looking my best today. Isn't there something extra you can do? Something special? What? Ah, you know, some of the things you do to the young fellows. Smart me up a bit, so. Face massage, some, some perfume water. All I know is 15 cents as usual, Mr. Vandergelder. And that includes everything that's decent to do to a man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, now listen, Joe, I don't want you flying around this down at the barber shop. But I need something extra today because I'm going to New York to call in a very refined lady named Miss Irene Malloy. You're calling on ladies that is none of my business, Mr. Vandergelder. Hold your horses, Joe. Uncle Horace! Uncle Horace! What is it, Urban Guard? What have you done to Ambrose? I had a quiet little talk with him. You did? Yes, I explained to him that he's a fool. Oh, no! Ah, oh, weeping, weeping, a waste of water. I've done you a good turn. You'll come and thank me when you're 50. I love you! Save your tears for New York where they won't be noticed. I love you! I tell you that you don't.
mean I'm planning to get married. Married? Yes, married. Any objections? Well, no, No. But... Many congratulations, and to the lady, too. No. That's none of your business. Any further questions? But I mean... But what? I mean... But, but, but what? What? Why? Why <laughs> what? Damn it, speak up! Well, why are you getting married? <sighs> Let me tell you something, son. I've worked hard and become rich, friendless, and mean. And in Yonkers, <laughs> that's about as far as a man can get. Besides, it's time to be doing something a bit foolish. And I need a steady housekeeper. <laughs> it takes a woman all powder and pink to joyously clean out the drain of the sink. And it takes an angel with long golden lashes and soft dressed fingers for dumping the ashes. Yes, it takes a woman, a dainty woman, a sweetheart, a mistress, a wife. Oh, yes, it takes a woman, a fragile woman, to cure in you the sweet things in life. The frail young maiden who's constantly there for washing and gluing and shoeing the mare. And it takes a female for setting the tables and weaving the guernsey and cleaning the stable. Yes, it takes a woman, a dainty woman, a sweetheart, a mistress, a wife. Oh, yes, it takes a woman, a fragile woman, to bring you the sweet things in life. She's a joy and treasure for practically speaking To whom can you turn when the plumbing is leaking? To that dainty woman, that fragile woman That sweetheart, that mistress, that wife Oh yes, it takes a woman, a husky woman To bring you the sweet things in life Mm -hmm. And I suppose you listen to this. 
Well, the fact is, I've practically decided to ask Miss Irene Malloy to be my wife. You have? Yes, I'm going to New York this very afternoon to discuss it with her. Well, that's just about the best news I've ever heard, Mr. Van Gelder. Oh, yes, marvelous news indeed. Well, I'm just racking my brain here. I'm trying to think of something that's made me happier, but I just can't think of anything because this is just so wonderful, it really is. <laughs> well, it is all your fault, you know. You're the one who got me in this whole marrying frame of mind with your introductions and your steaming. Well, a woman has to make a living. One morning I'll wake up and the whole house seems like an empty shell. It certainly is. And pretty dirty, too. It certainly is. A man needs someone to take out the garbage. And Irene Malloy is just the one to do it. Oh, darling girl. Well, I think it's perfectly wonderful what's going to happen in your household, Mr. Mandigeller. Oh, I never did like the idea of all that. All that money of yours lying in great piles in the bank, so useless and motionless. And, uh, <laughs> As my late husband, Ephraim Levi, always said, money should circulate like rainwater. It should be pouring in and out among the people, to little dressmakers and cabmen and restaurants, setting up a little business over here, furnishing a good time over there. Oh, I just know that you and the future Mrs. Van Gelder will see to it that all your hard-earned wealth starts flowing in and out among the people, just Alone. All right. Pouring out. Stop saying that. So I guess there's nothing else for me to say but to wish you every happiness under the sun and to say goodbye, Mr. Van Gelder. Well, yes, well, goodbye. Oh, and when I get back to New York, I'll just tell the other girl I had lined up for you, the heiress, not to wait. What did you say? Nothing. A word. Heiress. Oh, now wait a minute, Mrs. Levi. That's kind of, kind of unusual, isn't it? Well, I haven't been wearing myself the bone, hunting up usual girls to interest you, Mr. Van Gelder. But I see that it's all too late. You're engaged to marry Irene Malloy. So, well, I'm not engaged. Well, I cannot keep upsetting and disturbing the finest women in New York unless you mean business. Who said I don't mean business? Well, I hope you do. I'll meet you in front of Irene Malloy's hat shop at 2.30, per usual. I want to be there to make sure nothing goes wrong. Just tend to Ermengarde or I'll ask you to return the fee I gave you. Speaking of money. Oh, no. Well, I almost forgot to tell you. How much? Well, it seems I left my return railroad ticket and all of my money in my other handbag, which I took to the cleaners before it burned down. Fifty? Fifty? Twenty. Oh, bless you. And don't you worry your precious little head about a thing, Mr. Van Degeller. Just keep all your thoughts on the lovely Irene Malloy. Hmm. Oh, if he had any taste at all, he'd have this room done up in green. Forest green. I don't care what your uncle says, I'm running away. Running away? Now hurry, before we miss the train. We're going to elope. Elope? How can you use such an awful word? Oh, where am I going? <laughs> <laughs> My, what a romantic scene. Oh, Mrs. Levi, will you please explain to Ambrose that I want to marry him, but not elope? It doesn't concern Mrs. Levi. Mr. Kemper, everything concerns Dolly Levi. Don't listen to her. I know why you're here. To help. And lovely's all the help it can get. We're wasting time. Now, wait a minute, both of you. <laughs> There's no time. Armingard, do you or do you not want Mr. Vandegilder to dance at your wedding? I do. Well, then. Mr. Vandegilder, Mr. Kemper, can you dance? I'm an artist, Mrs. Levi. I paint. No problem. This is Dolly Levi. Painters taught how to dance. <laughs> now, here's what we'll do. Armengard, I'm going to take you to New York as your uncle requested. You see, I told you. You, Mr. Kemper, will stay close behind. I will? Tonight, we will take her to dinner at Harmonia Gardens Restaurant. But what? There's this man there. Rudolph Raisenweiber. <laughs> he knows me well. We'll have you and Armengard entered into the poker contest. Poker contest? The winner gets a solid gold cup and some money, and you'll win it. We'll see to it. Oh, the cups we won, my husband and I. Now, wait a minute. Now, Mrs. Levi, I'm surprised you have acquaintances in places like that. Not acquaintances, Ermengarde. Friends. Dear friends from time gone by. My husband believed in life. Any place you could get it. Wherever there were people. All kinds of people. And every Friday night, even when times were bad, every Friday night, like clockwork, down those stairs at the Harmonia Gardens we came. Oh, not acquaintances, Ermengarde. Friends. Now that's all very well for you, Mrs. Levi, but you're Mr. Busy. Kemper, do you or do you not want to show Mr. Van Degelder that you too mean business? Yes. yes. Well, all right then. You must go to Harmonia Gardens restaurant tonight and say that Mrs. Levi sent you. And tell Rudolph. Tell Rudolph that Dolly's coming back. Dolly's coming back? <laughs> yes. 
And I want a table for two with a stuffed chicken. Right o'clock. Eight o'clock. Mr. Vandegelder will learn of your triumph at the poker contest, and everything will work out beautifully. But how, Mrs. Levi, how? How? Oh! oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Suggestion. Why, well, I shall denounce you both for the terrible liars that you are. <laughs> A millinery shop. Women at work. <laughs> Adventure, Barnaby. I'm scared. Living, Barnaby. But I'm scared. Will you go, Barnaby? Yes, Cornelius. Yes. New York. Elevated trains. The lights of Broadway. The stuffed whale at Barnum Museum. Stuffed whale? Wow. <laughs> Are you going to light them all, Cornelius? Holy cabooses, they're swelled up like they're ready to bust. <coughs> <coughs> Holy cabooses, <coughs> what a smell. <coughs> oh, get back in front of me. We're going to New York. Outside of the young curves, well, there beyond this hick town, Barnaby, there's a slick town, Barnaby, out there, full of shine and full of sparkle. Close your eyes and see it glisten, Barnaby.
is just what I want to be. Oh, my God. I'll be wearing ribbons down my eyes this summer Blue and green and streaming in the yellow sky So if someone special comes my way
Barnaby Tucker here. Very pleased to meet you, gentlemen. Is there something I can do for you? Oh, well, you see, uh, we're just uh, two ladies and we... We're hats, you see. And, uh, we're, we're about town looking for some hats to Malloy and we wonder if we could... And, and we wonder if we could buy a lady or two to Malloy with her. Yeah. <laughs> we want to buy a hat. Oh, well, for, for a lady, of course. And, uh... Everyone said to go to Mrs. Malloy's because she's so pretty. <laughs> Her hats are so pretty. And what kind of a hat would uh, Mrs. Hackle be wanting? Oh no, Mrs. Malloy, there is no Mrs. Hackle. Yes, there is. Your mother. <laughs> she is not in back. Now, what did you, Mrs. Malloy? Now, this lady friend of yours, couldn't she come in one day and choose a hat for herself? Oh no, impossible, because you see, there is no... I mean, she's Barnaby! Oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, but I mean, but she lives in Yonkers, and, and she said to pick out something reasonable. Don't be silly, Barnaby! Money is no object with us, none at all. This is my assistant, Miss Minnie Fay. <laughs> <laughs> Minnie, Mr. Hackle and Mr. Tucker. Good afternoon, ma'am. Afternoon. Afternoon, ma'am. And, uh, forgive me for saying this, but you should see Yonkers, Mrs. Malloy. And by that I mean perhaps, uh, you and Mr. Malloy would like to see Yonkers. <laughs> Some say it's the most beautiful town in the whole world. So I've heard, but I'm afraid there is no Mr. Malloy, Mr. Hackle. Well, I'm a widow. Oh, you are? Barnaby, she's a widow! <laughs> You know, if you should happen to have a, a Sunday free in the future. Oh, you're a Catholic, aren't you? Well, don't let that worry you. I would be willing to change. <laughs> if, you should if you should happen to have a, a weekend free in the future, I would, I mean, uh, we would love to show you Yonkers from top to bottom. Well, it just so happens, Mr. Hackle, that I might be in Yonkers sooner than you think. Well, you see, I have a friend who lives in Yonkers. Oh, you do? Perhaps you know it. I do. <laughs> It's always so silly to ask on occasions such as this. I mean, why should you know him? It's a Mr. Vandergelder. Oh, Mr. Vandergelder! Oh, Where's Vandergelder? A Vandergelder's fame heed? Yes, do you know him? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Vandergelder is coming here to see me this very afternoon. Coming here this afternoon? Cornelius, Cornelius, look, he's right there. We've got to go. Look out! Thank you for calling this Malloy! Gentlemen, what are you doing? Well, it's planned it all later. Just help us. Just, just this once. Come out of there this minute. Mr. Hackle, Mr. Tucker, now I insist that you come out of there or I'll be forced. Oh, Mr. Vandercounter. <laughs> oh, how nice to see you. Oh, Miss Dolly Levi, what a surprise. Oh, Irene, darling, how well you look. Well, you must be in love. Afternoon, Mrs. Malloy. How oh, nice to have you in New York, Mr. Vandergelder. Yes, well, we thought we'd pay you a little visit today, Irene. Unless it's inconvenient. Inconvenient? Why, whatever gave you that idea? Well, Mr. Vandergelder thought he saw two customers in the shop. Two men. Men? Well, in a ladies' hat shop? <laughs> what a ridiculous idea. <laughs> well. Mr. Vandergelder, I simply must show you my workroom. I'm so eager for you to see it. I've already seen it. Twice. But I need your advice. Advice is cheap, Mrs. Malloy. You see, it's the things that come gift wrap that count. Well, I have never heard that put more beautifully. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vandergelder. Chocolate covered peanuts on shell. That's the expensive kind. <laughs> well, let's go open them in my workroom. Mrs. Malloy, I've come here today because I've important business to discuss with you. Well, business, Mr. Vandergelder? The hay and feed business? Well, not exactly. A new hat shop, perhaps? In Yonkers? Oh, I hear it's a beautiful city and quite historic, you know, he said. Yes. Go on, who's been telling you about Yonkers, may I ask? Nobody, just a friend. A 
friend. Well, you see, he... He? Yes. His name, Miss Malloy? What? His name. Oh, uh, I believe it was... Is Mr. Cornelius Hackle from Young's. Cornelius Hackle? Yes, do you know him? He's my head clerk. He is. He's been in my store for ten years. Where would you have known him? Oh, just one of those chance meetings, I suppose. Cornelius Hackle has no right to chance meetings. Where was it? Mr. Vanderkelder, it's very unlike you to question me like this. <laughs> well, the truth might as well come out now as later. Mr. Vandegelder, your head clerk is better known than you think he is. Nonsense. Oh, yes, he's in New York all the time. He's very well liked. He goes everywhere. Everyone knows Cornelius Tapp. He never comes to New York. He works all day in my store and then goes to sleep in the brand room at 9 o'clock. So you think. But it's not true. Dolly Levi, you are mistaken. Horace Vandegelder, you keep your nose so deep in your account books. You need to know what goes on. Yes, by day, Cornelius Tapp is your name. Faithful, trusted head clerk. But by night, oh, but by night, he leads a double life, that is all. Well, he is. Ow! Tear at the opera, at all of the fashionable homes and restaurants. Why, he's at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant two or three times a week. The fact is, Mr. Van Gelder, he is the wittiest, he is the naughtiest, most delightful man in New York City. Well, he's, he's just the famous Cornelius Hacker, that's all. <laughs> It ain't the same, man. If I thought Cornelius Hackle came to New York, I'd discharge him. Who took the horses off of Jenny Lynn's carriage and pulled her through the streets? Who? Cornelius Hackle did. Who just the other night dressed up as a waiter at the Fifth Avenue Hotel and dropped an oyster right down? Oh, no, I can't even say it. Too wicked. Say it! No, but it was Cornelius Hackle. <laughs> it ain't the same, man. Where did he get the money? No, oh, he's very rich. Rich? I keep his money in my own safe. He's got $145.36. No! Oh, Mr. Van Together, you're killing me. He's one of the hackles. The hackles? Yes. They built the canal. <laughs> Which canal? The Harry. Both. <laughs> well, then why would he work in my store? Well, I'll tell you. I don't want to hear it. I'm going home. It ain't the same man, and you can't get away from the facts. I mean, darling, I can see you were as taken with him as everybody else is. But Dolly, what are you saying? Mrs. Malloy, how long has he been calling on you? Mr. Vandergelder, suppose I were to tell you he's not been calling on me. Oh, uh, excuse me. Not now, Minnie. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
peach and fish. So does not. Does not mean that you can cause all of this trouble without making up for it. She's right. We'll do anything, anything. I read this is Cornelius Hackle. We've already met. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? That jail is absolutely out of the question. Cornelius, explain to her that uh, I'm Cornelius Hackle. It seems to me that the only Yes, of course, of course, Irene Darling, you sent to the law at once. You can have them both put away for years. Help, police, help! Oh, we go to dinner with them first. Dinner? Well, that's to show that you tried to settle it amicably. That's the way things are done in the law. Dinner first, life imprisonment later. Who oh, knows what could happen before you send them off to jail? Mr. Hackley. Oh, by all means, it, it's what Barnaby and I have in mind all along. Minnie, well, you and I have been respectable for years. Now that we're in disgrace, we might as well make the most of it. <laughs> it's the only supposed thing to do. Cornelius! Now, uh, I know this lovely little donut shop in the railway station. And <laughs> you... A donut shop? Oh, well, certainly not. We want a fine dinner in the heart of the fashionable world. And I know just the place. Harmonia Gardens on 14th Street. <gasps> the Harmonia Gardens? Your favorite restaurant, Mr. Hackle. The finest food and a lovely orchestra. Oh, the poker contest is very nice. Dancing! <laughs> you just ask for food on, he'll give you the best table. <gasps> it sounds marvelous. Minnie, we'll close the shop and take the whole day off. No, oh. now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we, we couldn't possibly go there. It's not the, the money or anything, it's the... Why, Mr. Hackle? It's the dancing, you see. They have these uh, competitions in a place like that, you said so yourself. And I just, I don't know how. It would take me weeks, months, years to... This is Dolly Levi, chief clerk's taught how to dance. <laughs> Incompetent clerks, too. <laughs> now, you just put one R here, and one... It's no use. I have absolutely no sense of rhythm. Absolutely no sense of rhythm is one of the primary requirements for learning by the Levi method. <laughs> Just give me five minutes of your time, Mr. Hack, and I will have you dancing in the streets. I think we'll start with lesson seven, the world's key turn. Now it's very simple. You just go right foot touch, left foot touch, under, back, around, touch, back, through, around, behind, oh. out, over, release, and I'm firm. <laughs> That was wonderful. When I think of the lovely women who will find heaven in your arms. And then we'll go back to lesson one. Put your hand on her waist and stand with her right in your left. And, and, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Of course you were, Mr. Hackle. Someone whose arms you're in. Hold on to her tight and spin. And one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Look, I'm dancing! And everyone! 
to my side. I'm fine. <laughs> and your little Alex. Little? Oh, she got married a year ago last September. Married? Oh, she's so happy. Oh, I remember how wonderful it was to be in love like that. Why, why? It can happen again for you, Mrs. Levi. It's just so hard to know where love is hiding. Oh, don't go trying to manage a thing like love. If you do that, you won't see it when it's right there in front of you. Right in front. Ephraim, let me go. It's been long enough, Ephraim. Every night, just like you'd want me to, I put out the cat. I made myself a rum toddy. Or two. And before I went to bed, I said a little prayer, thanking God that I was independent, that nobody's life was mixed up with mine. Then, one night, an oak leaf fell out of my Bible. I had put it there when you asked me to marry you. A perfectly good oak leaf, but without color and without life. And then realized that I was like that oak leaf. For many years, I had not shed one tear, nor for one moment been outrageously happy. Now, of course, Van Gelder, but he's always saying the world is full of fools. And in a way, he's right. But there comes a time where you have to decide whether you want to be a fool among fools or a fool alone. Well, I've made that decision, Ephraim, and it would make me feel so much better if you would just give me a sign, any kind of sign that you approve. I've decided to rejoin the human race. And Ephraim, I want you to give me away. Before the parade passes by, I'm gonna gain stuck while there's still time left. Before the parade passes by. You're crying. Tully, the world's just full of such wonderful things. Come with us. I will, I mean. I will. Before the parade passes by, I'm gonna go and taste Saturday's high life. Before the parade, I'm gonna get some life back into my life. I'm ready to move out front. I've had enough of just passing by life. With the rest of them, with the best of them, I can hold my head up high. For I've got to go again. I've got to try. Oh, no. 
I couldn't let it wait another minute. You owe me more than that. What about that fee I gave you for getting me all tangled up with that collector of men's hats? Oh, yes, I agree. She was a disappointment. Darling girl. Dolly Levi, let me make one thing clear. You have been discharged as my marriage broker. I have no further need for one. From now on, you are just like a regular woman like anyone else. I am. Well, Horace, I understand your feelings, and I can guarantee there will be no need for my services after your dinner engagement tonight. Dinner engagement? Yes, it's all arranged. Private room, table for two, Harmonia Gardens. She'll be waiting. Who will who, who, be waiting? Who 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 will be waiting? What a very beautiful, very rich woman I mentioned to you earlier. The heiress to a fortune, remember? I'm not interested. What's her name? Ernestina. I'm not interested. What's her last name? Simple. Simple! Ernestina Simple! Can she cook? Well, she makes all of her own meals on a solid gold stove. Sounds like a fool, and I'm not interested in fools. Neither am I. Good day, Mr. Van Gilden. Good day! And remember, 730 Harmonia Gardens. Don't be late. She's very fussy. Dolly Levi, you're an exasperating woman! Well, Laura standing down there, that is the nicest thing you have ever said to me. Ethel, he's as good as mine. <laughs> I'm gonna raise the roof, I'm gonna carry on. Give me an old trombone, give me an old baton. Oh! 
your tables, please. <laughs> line up, line up. Oh, it is your order as the head waiter of the Harmonia Gardens restaurant. Oh, your supreme commanders that tonight of all nights, our lighting service will be twice as lightning as ever. Or else!
It's so nice to be back home with you. 
looking the place over, getting acquainted with all of my surroundings. That's the trouble with you, Dolly, always wanting to know everything, always putting your nose into other people's affairs. Anyone who married you would get as nervous as a cat. What? What was that? I said anyone who married you would get as nervous oh, as a cat. Oh, Miss Van Gelder, get that idea right out of your head. <laughs> I'm surprised you even mentioned such a thing. Understand this once and for all, I have no intention of marrying you. I didn't mean that. Well, I certainly hope not. Horace Van Gelder, you go your way and I'll go mine. <laughs> I am not just some Irene Malloy whose head can be turned by a couple of chocolate-covered peanuts. Unshelled. <laughs> I'm surprised you even mentioned such a thing. Mrs. Levi, you misunderstood. Well, I certainly hope not. <laughs> if I did have the intention of marrying again, it'd be to a far more pleasure-loving man than you. Oh, but let's not talk of it. Here's the waiters with our food. Oh, beautiful. Oh, thank you. I'll serve Mr. Van Gelder Rudolph. Oh, thank you. Now, here is some white meat for you. Oh, and some dumplings, light as air they are. Oh, and some giblets, very tender and very good for you. No, as I was saying, you go your way and I'll go mine. <laughs> oh, start right in on the wine. I think you'll feel better at once. However, since you brought the matter up, there is one more thing I'm going to say. I didn't bring up the matter at all. Very well, we won't talk about it. But yes, it's true I'm a woman who likes to manage things, but I would not want to manage anything as out of control as your household, Mr. Van Gelder. You'll have to do that yourself, God helping you. It's not out of control. Very well, we won't talk about it. However, the pity of it is you could be a perfectly charming, witty, amiable man if you wanted to be. Well, I don't want to be charming. Oh, but you are. Look at you now. You can't hide it. Now sit down, horse, and we'll talk of something else. But before we change the subject, there's one more thing I'm going to say. Well, I don't want to hear it, and you're wasting your time, Dolly Levi. I won't ask you to marry me. Well, then I guess that means you want me to ask you. Well, I'm sorry, Horace. I'm turning you down. <laughs> How can you turn me down when I haven't asked you anything? Uh, it's no use arguing. I've made up your mind. Now, here, let me cut your wings. I've got a headache. I'm going back to my hotel. No, but you can't go now. The competition's about to begin. Here's the money to pay for dinner. Here's $20. Wait a minute, but there's nothing in here but a dollar, three dimes, five pennies, and a button. Wait a minute, this isn't my wallet. I've lost my wallet. Full boy me? This wallet you found? Oh, impossible. I didn't have to find my wallet. You scream, you jealous. They're going to get out of here. Well, what are you doing? I've never been here. They don't know me. Stop eating that turkey. I can't pay for it. Oh, Mr. Vandegelder, look. It's the newest thing. Oh, oh, go. Oh, and there's one dancer in particular I want you to see. Observe his graceful movements. Oh, wait a minute! That guy! That, that dancer! Oh, wait, isn't he wonderful? With a talent like that, he would adore to win the solid gold cup. Come along, Mrs. Deloy. It has been a perfectly wonderful evening, but I'm afraid we're going to have to cut a bit. Excuse me, uh, George.
and the battery, the siren riot, and several other equally serious violations. I say, is there anyone here to speak on your behalf? Oh, I think you should do that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dolly Levi, counselor at law. <laughs> Your Honor, the defense rests. <laughs> counselor, you haven't made your case yet. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no need to call witnesses when I see upon that bench a brow that gleams with honor, a great symbol of the great motto of this great land. <laughs> Your Honor, I call for freedom for my clients and a verdict of guilty for the only real culprit. Horace Van Gelder of Yonkers, New York. Dolly! The one man responsible of these grievous charges of willful destruction to private property. A curtain torn. <gasps> a waiter bruised. <gasps> Put solid gold cup. <gasps> and oh! Cruelty <laughs> to a poor, unfortunate minor.
Of course, I, I've seen a woman before, but today, today I talked with one equal to equal. And they're so different from men. And awfully, awfully mysterious, too. I bet you could know a woman for a hundred years without ever being sure whether or not she even liked you. Today I've lost so many things. My job, my, my future. Everything that other people think is important, but I don't care. Even if I have to dig ditches for the rest of my life, I am going to be a ditch digger who once had a wonderful day. What am I telling all you for?
something, but it rains. I never knew, Dolly, with 
without you. Dolly, life was awfully flat, and more than that, it was awfully wrong.